Professor Dennis McDermott provided a very powerful opening address for the SPA conference in 2018. Professor McDermott is the director of the Poach Centre for Indigenous Health and Wellbeing here in Adelaide. His presentation was entitled Big Sister Wisdom, How Might Non-Indigenous Speech Pathologists Genuinely and Effectively Engage with Indigenous Australians? Professor McDermott is going to tell us a little bit about that right now. Okay, um, please feel free to prompt me, but I guess the main message I picked up was riffing off something that my sister uh, said some years ago in her work. And her work was with the Department of Community Services in New South Wales. And she was a child protection specialist, then she became a regional manager for a whole area of New South Wales. Had a lot of work to do uh, connecting service providers with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in New South Wales. And I guess a simple mantra that she just popped up one day, came out and it made a lot of sense to me was, it's about meeting people in their own reality. And it sounds simple, but I guess that what I took from that was saying, we have a whole bunch of skills, but if you apply them in a standardised or inappropriate way, it's not going to help anybody. If you take the trouble to shut up, tune in, sit back, listen to the person in front of you, you're going to find the best way to apply those skills or the services that you've got available to help that person if you understand where they're coming from, their own reality. And then they'll also engage with you and you'll start to go somewhere. It won't be one hit, there's no one hit wonders, but you'll start to go somewhere in that work. I was really interested in the concept of dadiri, deep listening. Would you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. And that relates very much, I think, to what I've just said. You know, I'm a psychologist by training. And psychologists are taught to be active listeners, you know. We nod a lot. <laughs> we, mm, I see, mm, tell me more, you know. It's cliche. But beyond that, there's something real. And that something real is we don't know a person's full story. And sometimes that story, that narrative, is difficult. It might be shameful. It might be broken narrative. And so our job as health professionals is to help. Why has this person come to see me? Or what's the real need of this community? and to hear what they're really trying to say to me. And that's deep listening. And the term comes, sort of my first uh, brush with it, was from uh, the Malak Malak language, Dadiri. The word Dadiri, I should say, from the Malak Malak language. From the Daly River region, about 200 k's southwest of Darwin. And Auntie Miriam Rose Ungamer Bauman was the first person to bring this idea into non-Indigenous Australia. And she says deep listening it's about listening, in a sense, it's, about, it's a bit like mindfulness. It's listening with your whole being, not just to the words, but what's behind the words. Who is this person in front of me? What are they trying to tell me about fully with themselves and what they're saying? What's their silence mean? You know, and so you're tuning in. It's almost like you're meditating or reflecting in real time with the person in front of you to try and get what they're trying to say and find hard to say. And to me, that's a skill for all health professionals. If we can get there, we start to get somewhere. Yeah, I think so. Not sure that it's easy. It's not easy, you know. Um, I showed a video today in my presentation of one of my US colleagues, um, and she was talking about quietening the chatter in our mind. You know, often with health professionals, she's a pediatrician by training, and she was saying, as a health, as a doctor, you know, we, we research how people communicate in clinical settings. And she found, unfortunately, 12 minutes of the time it's the clinician talking, and three minutes of the time it's the patient or client talking. So it should be reversed, or at least half and half. And it's about that being able to be confident enough in your own skill set to say, I need to really hear what's going on for you. You know, the famous psychiatrist, psychoanalyst Carl Jung would go and sit with someone and say, well, I don't know, what's going on for you? What's happening here? You know, I'm paraphrasing him. He would not profess ignorance, but he, he wouldn't assume that he knew what was going on. He'd try and let the person express the difficult stuff, and once they feel comfortable enough, they will start to get to the real nub of why they're here to see you. So for our profession, you're perhaps suggesting that we should apply that to working with communities as well as individuals? Absolutely. You know, uh, don't presume you know. Don't presume people don't want to talk to you, but who are you? you know, who are you, personally? Every health professional goes in, well, if a health professional has come and go to this community, can we trust you? 
who's interested in Bernard Hart here, and so people will test you out, or sometimes they'll be silent. Are you comfortable with that silence? I had a story told me by an Aboriginal man at a conference recently who was, went up to the far north of Western Australia where there had been some real difficulties in this particular community. And he met one of the elders, and the elder grabbed his hand and held onto it. I spoke thought, oh, okay. And he held his hand for 30 minutes and let it go and said, okay, you know, you know I can trust you. You know, 30 minutes of silence. 30 minutes. So silence is a, and this is not going to happen every time, but this was a particular community and this bloke wanted to know whether, whether he would wear it, how, how would he sit with it? And he did, and he was trusted. So there are many ways to find that trust. You know, I, I said in this speech today, and I've been saying it for a long time, this speech and the presentation today, you know, people want your skills, but your skills don't involve wearing a white coat. So if your skills are the hat you bring to a situation, leave that hat on. But take off your metaphorical white coat. Put down your clipboard, you know, and let people see who you are as a human being as much as a health professional. When they trust you as a human being, they will bring you their need and you can work as a health professional. So if you could sum up what you would like to say to our profession in one point, <laughs> what might that be? I, I, I can give you some leeway, you could do two. Okay, two, two. Well, listening certainly is, is one aspect of it. It's a hugely important aspect of it. Um, when uh, I bounce off my sister's maxim of meeting people in their own reality, I guess it means not being judgmental. One doesn't know what that person in front of you has been through. And I riff a bit off the idea of the stolen generations today and how it's, I would say, touched almost every extended Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander family in Australia. It's a huge issue. And if you know about that, you stop making judgments about people. If you know that history, the colonial history, you stop making judgments. So I say that, that openness to being guided by the person in front of you, that's a culturally safe approach. You, know, you don't need to know everything about the person in front of you. You don't need to be an expert. If, there's, if there were 200 discrete Aboriginal nations or clans or language groups before European settlement, you don't have to be across those 200. How can you be across all those cultures? But if you're culturally safe or culturally humble, then you open up and try and tune into the person in front of you in all their uniqueness as well as their cultural background. And that person will then, if you are genuine, possibly open up to you. Professor McDermott, thank you so much. Thank you for a presentation that was powerful and interesting and just disturbing enough to make us think. Can I say one thing? Don't be afraid of that disturbance, not you personally, but a beginning professional. We term it now, manage, or it's a disquiet that happens when you first confront Australian colonial history and when you confront the self-reflection necessary in being a culturally safe practitioner. There's a disquiet. In our teaching, we aim to make it a manageable disquiet. So stay with it, write out that disquiet, and it'll take you somewhere. Yeah, I think it's a positive disquiet. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you.